Well, good Monday morning to you. Welcome to our live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi, Live Healthy, Be Healthy, with Drs. Jim and Janine Fox from Doctors Nutrition, located Morning. on Cowan Road in Gulfport, just south of Pass Road, across from the garden center of the old Kmart. So uh, it's a beautiful Monday. Yep. It is. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Yeah. How about you? Just uh, busy. Yeah, well, yeah. That's busy, it. busy things and going on. But uh, um, we're talking this morning about chronic viruses. Our phone lines are 896 713 800-349-0713. If you have a question for the doctors regarding today's subject or any subject uh, that uh, maybe you have an issue with or you've been waiting to give them a call, today's the time to do it. And we'll be taking your phone calls for the next uh, 29 minutes. So uh, <laughs> and then uh, we'll have a special. But uh, chronic viruses, it can cover uh, kind of a broad spectrum of things that affect different parts of your body, whether it's uh, sure can. organs or your, your skin mm -hmm. uh, or anything. Well, yeah, you know, when you, <clears throat> well, you know, of course, everybody thinks about, uh, you know, the biggies is your, your shingles. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that comes out and affects the skin. Uh, but that particular virus starts out when we're usually when we're kids. Right, as moms. You know, uh, no, no chickenpox. Chicken I mean, chickenpox. Yeah, yeah. chickenpox, yeah. right. <laughs> it was one of those. Well, chicken that pox, other moms, measles, yeah. you know, those are the usually ones. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. And, but it starts out, uh, you know, as the uh, varicella, which is the chickenpox, mm -hmm. and then it goes latent or dormant, and it actually literally you know, that virus tends to migrate down the nerves and, and wants to hide into what we call the dorsal nerve root ganglion, or right at the base of the spine. Mm -hmm. And then it can come out any time later. Um, Which is why it causes so much nerve pain and pain when it comes out, because it does affect the nerve. Is there anything in particular that may just make it come out? Well, well any, of, any of these chronic viruses, you know, they're, they're latent. Some of them have, can be latent for 20, 30 years or more. And then all of a sudden something happens, some sort of trauma, Mm -hmm. Okay, stress. God, we've all got that. Uh, it gets worse every day, right? Really? So you got that. Get, uh, getting run down. Run down, mm -hmm. uh, immune yeah. system not working quite like it should. You know, we've talked about the immune system ad right. infinitum, you know, in, in the past. You know, things like your probiotics and so on, all that stuff. Or another virus. Let's say, for instance, you're, uh, you're cooking along, you're doing pretty good, and you have kind of like a, what you think might be a flu-like or a bad cold or adenovirus. Right. And then shortly after that, boom, here comes something like shingles. Because that particular virus that you had, it was acute, that gave you the rhinitis or the runny nose and stuff like that. All of a sudden now it, it's, it suppressed your immune system. Your immune system has been busy trying to handle that. And then bingo, here comes that chronic virus that's been just sitting there just waiting. Yeah, which just here, with waiting. all chronic viruses, they'll actually say it tends to come on when you have a compromised host. And you are the host. You are the host. Um, <laughs> You've been compromised. You have been so compromised. So a compromised right. host, right. actually, which, you know, when we talk about immune system all the time and how yeah. important mm -hmm. it is to keep the immune system strong, and that's one reason why is because some of these chronic, and we all probably have some chronic viruses. Oh, yeah. Whether I mean, they're active or not, you know, we hope not. Right. But we all have some. So when right. people, we even, there's a value we look at in our lab work. And when it's actually, when you have an inverted diff, not always, but many times it can be an cr active chronic virus. And people are like, chronic viruses? Who has chronic viruses? I'm like, everybody does. You know, we all have yeah. something. It's mm -hmm. just when you get compromised is when it tends to come out and cause other problems. Now, can, can, can you go through your entire life and not have shingles? And if, yeah. Even if you oh, had yeah. chicken oh, pox? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, most people do. I mean, it, the, the actual... Um, Occurrence rate in, in shingles is kind of low. I think it's, no, well, it's about one in three will well, have shingles in their lifetime. Okay. So 33%. But if you look, especially in our great age group or older, everyone's had the chicken pox. <laughs> I mean, most, the majority of the people, you ha find very few people that actually didn't have chicken pox as a kid. Now, right. now they're doing all the chicken pox vaccinations and they mm -hmm. might not have had chicken pox and who knows, but we all did. Right. And yeah. we all, most of the people we know did. Yeah, we all, we all had yeah. those. Kids virus, chicken so, pox, mumps, yeah. measles. You know, even of the age group that had chicken pox, only, you know, a third will get shingles in their lifetime, which is, you know, like I said, 33% maybe. So still, it's, it's high, but yet it's not everybody. So yeah. you don't have to. If you keep your immune system strong is when you're not going to get the shingles. That's and the not get part. run down and stress. Stress yeah. is, like we talk about probably every week, stress aggravates everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, just about every, every, every part of your body mm -hmm. is, is aggravated some way, shape, or form by stress, it you is. know, and uh, stress can be brought on by work, family uh, situations, mm -hmm. 
driving down the road getting uh, road rage. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, see, we, see, we see news stories about that all the time. Uh, the government. And they just, <laughs> sorry. Whole new idea. show right there. Uh, okay. <laughs> they can put on some even, stress there too. I mean, a lot of the research on chronic viruses, all of them, not just shingles, shows mm -hmm. that trauma. And we see so many people that come in that say, you know, I didn't have this problem, I have all this fatigue and I have all these symptoms and it didn't come until after I was in a car wreck. And we hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of viruses that after trauma or stress can actually become active again because of stress to the body. And so it doesn't even yeah. have to be emotional stress, it can right. actually be physical stress. And so people say after a fall, mm -hmm. after... I was gonna say the fall is one of falls, the biggies. We, we see a lot, lot with too. The, yeah, mm -hmm. folks, let's say, 60 or above. I was going to say the older that you get, you have more yeah, of a tendency yeah, yeah. to something like that to happen. Yeah, you have more tendency to do stupid stuff like I do and fall off things like ladders <laughs> and stuff, you know. <clears throat> and uh, Even though their wife tells them not to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? And it happens, okay, and when it does, you know, okay, you, you're, you're going to stress the body. And when that happens, uh, things can come out like these old viruses. Wow. Because they, they say something like, uh, like on the shingles and or uh, varicella, uh, varicella zoster, they, and they classify it as two, two names but the same virus, okay? The, and when it comes out, first when we were first infected with varicella, that's chickenpox. And then it goes dormant, and it's still there, but it's dormant. Mm -hmm. And then it, when it comes out later, they say it's the zoster. Yeah, the and herpes that's, zoster. <clears throat> and the herpes zoster is actually the uh, uh, shingles. But, <clears throat> you know, when we had, they say that by age five, something like 95% of the population is exposed. Wow. By age five. And, something. you know, some some poor guy didn't get it till he was age seven or something, you know. But um, still, we're, we're just exposed to it constantly, especially with kids, you know, school environments, oh, preschool yeah. environments, stuff yeah, like gotta, that. It spreads a, like wildfire. You got a herd of kids, at, you know, in school or <laughs> oh, something yeah. like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like they pass it along, pass it yeah. along, yep. then they bring it home, and then, oh, they, yeah. and it just, uh, and then you take it to work, and it's like, like a, a never ending cycle. As to, uh, you know, you, you start a, an office pool. Who gets it next? <laughs> Who gets it okay. next? That's right. Janice is on the phone with us. Good morning, Janice. Good morning. Do you have a question for the doctors? I sure do. Um, I'm 61 years old. Okay. Luckily, my health insurance covers most of my immunizations now. I am a state employee. I got the shingles vaccine, oh, maybe two months ago. Then recently got my pneumonia 23. I had gotten the original pneumonia vaccine years ago when it first came out. I'd like to know, are there other vir or vaccines now that I should be getting? As I said, I'm 61. They mentioned tetanus, but is there anything else? And what's this deal with whooping cough that they're having on TV right no. now? We That's don't have time to answer that before the break, I'll be honest with you. If she could come back after the break, Jim. Yeah, can, can, could you can, do that? Sure. I'll we'll tell you what, we'll just, we'll just keep on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, for what, whooping cough, I mean, honestly, you get most people have had that vaccination when they're young. Yes. Um, it's pertussis. Well, I think we all did, but, but there's a lot of times, should get it again. Yeah, it's real important. The biggest thing we say with immunizations is it's important to keep your immune system strong even though you think you're protected from immunizations because we right. do a lot of testing at our store for, like, nursing students going to nursing school, people that are mm -hmm. actually, right. they need the titers to show they have immunity, and you don't know how many people do not have immunity after vaccination. We see it a lot. It's because so, their immune system is so Their immune system's not strong enough to make immunity to it. Yeah. So you still have to keep that immune system strong. Yeah, just because you have yeah. the vaccine does not mean that you're going to not get something. It might um, actually decrease your chances, and right. it depends on the person on how they their body makes immunity. So it actually right. is really, a lot of people are shocked when we do their titers right. and they yeah. don't show immunity to something, and they're like, but I had those shots. So I said, well, you don't show immunity to it. And isn't tetanus something that we should get like, what, every 10 years? The tetanus yeah, is about, about every, 10 yeah. years. Yeah. About you, every 10 years. And you can if you step on something or tetanus. I right. mean, that's, that one does run out. And I'm sure that a lot of people got their tetanus shots back when Katrina hit, yes. which I was one of them, you know, 10 years ago. So uh, right. about, about probably about, you know, one, right? about, about time for a new one. So that mm -hmm. is something that would be good for you to get uh, uh, every uh, every 10 years or so. And All I right. do think people are taking too many vaccinations. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of people out there that'll disagree with us on that one, um, but it does lower the immune system well, to get too yeah. many. So I you don't want to just go out and take everything that's available. I think it gives you that false sense of security. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what can get you in trouble. You know, oh, well, I've had my vaccination and, you know, bingo. Next right. thing you know, you, you're, you have compromised that immune system. Here it comes. All right. Thanks for the call, Janice. Thanks. Oh. All right, we'll be right back with our second portion here, Live Healthy, Be Healthy with Doctors Nutrition.
And welcome back to our Monday morning live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi, Live Healthy, Be Healthy, with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox, Doctors of Nutrition, located on Cowan Road in Gulfport, South of Pass Road. And remember that this show is rebroadcast every Friday from 9 to 9.30 here on WLOX-CBS. We're talking about chronic viruses this morning, and we had a big, long discussion there about shingles. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, you may go through your entire life and never have a problem with them, but uh, uh, you may, you know, uh, later, latter yeah. part of your lives is when it usually rears its ugly head. Shingles yeah. is one that we probably see that people know of. Right. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people are sick. People out there that are just sick all the time and fatigued and that it's just a chronic problem and everybody keeps saying there's nothing wrong with them or it's just depression. A lot of times it is viruses that have come out. Um, shingles is pretty obvious because you do get, a, I mean, you actually mm -hmm. get yeah, blisters obvious, and right. so you can actually, it's something that you can see. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other viruses you can't see. And that's one of the problems with viruses, even testing viruses, they, they're hard to detect sometimes. You know, yeah, and, and here's the sad part about it. You know, everybody comes up and says, because we get it all the time. I say, well, well, can you test me for these viruses? All right, there's thousands of viruses that we're exposed to and that we may have dwelling in us. Something like 8% of our genome, that's your genes, something like 8% of it actually matches viral RNA. 8%. So hmm. you're an 8% probably virus to begin with, you know, when you're born. And from there it goes downhill, you know, you get exposed to all these others. So, you know, when you look at it from that standpoint, we're, we're all there. We're all exposed to these things all the time. And, you know, somebody coughs or sneezes, that's one of the biggest vectors, you know, that droplet in the air and you pick it up and speed or you touch something, touch right. your mouth or your eyes or something, boom, you know, yeah, that's the biggest vector for the, almost all the viruses. And uh, intimate contact, and, and that can be, you know, you pick up a cup and drink after somebody inadvertently or whatever. Right. Um, kissing, which is, yeah. you know, the mononucleosis or, you know, the EBV or Epstein-Barr, that's one that will cause mononucleosis. And it's almost always, they call it the kissing sickness, you know, because that's one, one of the strongest vectors for it. Right. And, but now this, that's one, again, it does not go away. And we see a lot of times where it flares up later in life. Right. And we can do the titers for it to see if somebody has a flare up of the EBV. Mm -hmm. It's just a more expensive test and sometimes you don't change yeah. what you do if it is. But a lot of times, especially with the swollen glands all the time, that's yeah. one of the things you'll see with an actual reoccurrence of And it may uh, not be mono. the, and, and, and the thing about EBV, it may not come back as swollen glands. No, it might not. It you may, you know, they may things. never have, they say, well, I don't have that. Oh, you, you may not. Uh, it may, it may get it somewhere else. It can affect so many different cells. I mean, viruses are so, there's even a virus that they're linking a lot to chronic fatigue, and it's called the XM, MRV, I believe. XM, yeah, something like that, yeah. But anyway, there was research back about 2008, 2010, saying yes, it was definitely linked to chronic fatigue. Then a bunch of researchers come out and said, no, it's not. We're not detecting it. And then now new researchers are saying, well, it's because it mutates because of somebody's genes. The genes actually mutate the virus, and it don't look like the same virus as you tested for before. So viruses are so hard. There's even books written called virus hunting because yeah. sometimes wow. you got to hunt for them because they're not just obvious sometimes. And, and here's the bad part. Antibiotics don't work. No, antibiotics okay. are not antiviral. Everybody runs to the doc, but oh, I've got, I've got, got to, I'm sick. I've got to have something. I've got to have an antibiotic. Antibiotics don't do a doggone thing for these things. They are strictly a virus. It, there's only a few antiviral medications, hmm. a very few, and most of them carry some pretty good side effects. So they, they're very reluctant to use them if possible. You want to depend on your immune system to stay healthy and to keep that virus suppressed. That's the, that's really the, yeah, you, the message. You love the so commercials on TV that uh, they, they say, take this and this, but side effects may be this, 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 right, this, right, this, right, this, right. this, this, this. Yeah, the side effects are a lot, a lot worse than what you got. <laughs> exactly. Okay, uh, like we, you know, we always say strengthen the immune system, right. and there's definitely natural substances that's been shown to keep down replication of viruses, because of course, you're always gonna have some copies, but when right. you actually multiply the copies is when mm -hmm. you're gonna have more of an active problem. Um, vitamin D. We talk about that mm -hmm. all the time. Vitamin D deficiency. If you right. keep your D up, it's going to help with viral rep replication. Lysine. Lysine is an amino acid that actually, especially in the herpes viruses. Now, not everything works for every virus, but in the herpes family, that one really keeps down replication. Um, so, and it's destroyed know. in cooking. So yes. a lot of the foods that you eat, that you cook, overcook especially, uh, you'll destroy the lysine so you don't really get it. Or if you get a higher amount of arginine, which arginine can feed some viruses and help Nuts them replicate. Nuts and seeds, things like so that. So it's, you know, it's kind of a balance. And also mm -hmm. selenium is one of the things that you can do to actually help keep the, the mm -hmm. replication down. I think the, the thing that we want to get across about the, the virus versus, say, a bacteria. Now, bacteria is where your antibiotics are going to work. 
you know, staph or something like that. Staph, or a bacteria, is a self-contained little package. It has everything it needs to replicate itself. So it is a live little organism. A virus isn't. A virus is basically just, you know, RNA, which is part of DNA. And it has to invade our cells, the host, us, and it, once it invades our cell, it hijacks our cellular mechanisms to replic uh, replicate, replicate, that's a hard word, <laughs> replicate itself and then make more virus, you know, and more copies. And of course, once that happens, then that particular cell that it invaded dies, but it, it what we call blooms or buds, and, and here goes, you know, thousands and thousands or millions of more viruses out into the body. And that's, that's the, the downside, and there's no, antibiotic or anything that works on that. It's there, really up to there, your there, There's more and more research coming out on, and a, a big virus is the HPV. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have heard of the HPV, the human papillomavirus, which has actually been linked to cervical cancer. Right. Um, there is even a compound with new research. It, I mean, it's actually called AHCC. They've actually shown that it can um, get rid of it. And so there's more research coming out yeah. that actually, you know, is evolving. Now it is a natural product. It is not a drug, the mm -hmm. AHCC. Yeah. And there is a lot of natural products that can actually, that are antivirals. Hmm. Now, so, one of them we're going to have on our special this week. Okay. Uh, the uh, uh, Olivier. Okay. Uh, Dolores is on the phone with, has a question about shingles. Go ahead, Dolores. Hello. Yes, Hello. My name is Dolores. Uh -huh. And I have the shingles right now. Okay. What is the possibility of me getting it again? Real um, good. Good unless you, unless you do something for your immune system. But we also say there's things that you can do. What we we have the Olivier, which we are having on special this week, mm -hmm. is a, one of the stronger antivirals, and we see really good results with it and lysine to keep down replication, to actually you know help get rid of the shingles. And then people that tend to have shingles taking lysine regularly. It's a very inexpensive amino acid where you can okay. actually help prevent. Okay, so I can get that from any uh, drugstore, right? Well, um, yeah, but... Don't know about any drugstore, Lysine's but yeah. probably easier. Olive leaf is a tricky one because olive leaf, the one that we use, Olivier, has actually, the company that made it, the raw material, actually found a way to make it active in the body. A lot of it is not active in the body. Okay, maybe a health food store. Then. Yeah, we actually do have yeah. it, and we have the one that's the actual olive ear, and you got to look at the strength of it. I have people that come in all the time saying, I'm taking this and it's not working, and I look, and they would have to take 15 to 20 to equal one of ours. And then if somebody has shingle, we'll use nine of ours. Yeah. So they would have to take 90, 100 a day of some of the lower strength ones to actually equal the same thing. So definitely come by our store. We do have it, and we have it on special this week. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so very much. Okay, you're thank welcome. You. Oh, thank you. All right, our phone our phone lines are 896 713 We'll get into our final segment and have this week's special for you here in just a moment. And welcome back to our final segment this morning, Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox of Dr. Nutrition. Special this week. We, we You know, we, we've talked about this one product so many different times in different shows. Yes. I mean, yeah, it really, really, really works great for some for different things. But uh, you know, your immune system is what really is the Oliver. Yeah, you, and the, well, the Oliver does not boost the immune system. What it is is an antiviral, antibacterial, mm -hmm. antifungal, antiparasite. So it's kind of a catch-all. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the research was done by a pharmaceutical company back in the '60s because Upjohn uh, Up did so much research on it yeah. and showed that in a petri dish it would kill almost anything. They were actually but, going to bring it out as yeah, a pharmaceutical. Yeah, they were going to bring it out as a drug. Yeah. And instead, but they couldn't get it active in the body. So there's a biotech company, which is who is the maker of the Olivier, is a trade name from that company okay. that did find a way to get it active in the body. And so it does work very well. Well, they had worked on, the scientists at, uh, at that company had worked for Upjohn, and they had worked later on some of the AZT drugs, you know, for, which is for, for HIV. Mm -hmm. which and is the big thing there was bioavailability, how you get it in the system. Yeah. And so they knew this and they figured it out and they said, oh, well, maybe that'll work on, on this too. So they tried it and sure enough, it works. So, they so there is differences in olive leaf extract. So a lot right. of people, and like I said, right. we just talked about just a minute ago with the caller, is the strength difference, even if it is olive ear, you can get a 3% alaropin 
and it, it could be two, I've seen some that are 250 milligrams and 3%. Ours is 500 milligrams and a minimum of 15%. Wow. So, like I said, it would take 10 of those to equal one of ours on the same, even though it is the right ingredient. So, right. you just have to look at what you're getting. Yeah, yeah. 896 We have time for, you know, a couple more phone calls if you have a question regarding uh, our subject, chronic viruses or anything today, or a, a different uh, subject, is something you uh, have a question for the doctors. Um, you know, we talked so many times about, you know, and the lady called in about, well, I'll just run by the store and get some. I'll just run by the yeah. drugstore. And again, as you said, the difference is, is, is going to be the, uh, the purity of it. Right. Uh, you know, what you're getting, you're not right. getting a bunch of fillers. Well, our, ours, it's a whole different ball game when, yeah. you, when you buy it, you know. Everything that we have is pharma, what they call pharmaceutical grade. It right. actually is tested after the raw materials tested when it comes in, and it's also tested after the whole product is made. And you don't need a prescription there. Yes, right. and so it, it's, it has to be within 5% of the label claim. Mm -hmm. Now, 3%, just, right. three. Oh, 3%, 3%, okay. Well, it has to be very close to what the label says. To where many products out there, we've talked about it on the shows before, they go start testing products and there's none of what it says, especially in herbals, which this oh, is Oh, ABC herbal. News, I mean, good morning. Yeah, yeah. they did a big, had a big thing story on, it, yeah. on that about mm -hmm. a month ago, about mm -hmm. the, you know one of the big box stores. Yeah. That, uh, Actually, it was that, about five of the big box stores. Yeah, they said, <laughs> but, I mean, they, they have they all this stuff and it's not yeah. in there. Yeah, right. they, they, had actually, they had products. tested 25 products and only four had any of what it said on the label. So that's that's a pretty high percentage that didn't. So you're wasting your money whenever you when you when you do it that so way. So it does make a difference on what you get. Yes. Yes. And there and, are and where you get it. And where you get it, right. Yeah, yeah that's the other big thing. And part. there are other antiviral herbals as well and mm -hmm. products that do help. Um, garlic. Even eating raw garlic is actually an antiviral. Oh. Now, um, now that does protect you from the virus and it also keeps you from exposure because people stay away <laughs> from I was going to say, you got to mess up your social life too. Well, <laughs> but, you know, but you garlic and podiarco and um, mm -hmm. there's green tea, believe it or not, green tea has a lot of antiviral properties. People hmm. don't think of green tea, they think of more of antioxidants, but yeah, it also has right. antiviral properties too. A lot of the mushrooms, right. um, mushroom mm -hmm. combinations, they actually have antiviral properties. And, and even St. John's wort, which you know, the only John's problem wort. we have is it's sun sensitivity in this right. area. So. Oh yeah. 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 Even though St. John's wort is known for depression, there's so much research coming out on it for antiviral. Right. So it has a lot of good benefits to it. Sure does. Wow. So. Yeah. And as, you know, there's so many other different things that, um, you know, regarding chronic viruses that we can get into, but we really don't have time because I have like two minutes left. So right. uh, we've got time for a call. If you'd like to give us a call, 896-0713-800-349-0713. Or if you think of something during the week you want to uh, email me, you can, jtabor at wlox.com. Just send me an email with your question. We'll be glad to pass it along to the doctors and, and um, uh, address it on our uh, next show. We do sure. it live every Monday morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're glad to, you know, yeah. take your suggestions. What do you want to hear about? And right. the other great thing about it, you know, we talk a lot about the, you know, doing lab work and everything. It doesn't cost anything to go by and talk to the doctors. Right. Uh, you don't need a, uh, an appointment or anything. You can just stop over there. They're located on Cowan Road and Gulf Ward, just south of Pass Road. You can't miss it. It says Doctor's Nutrition right on the side of the building. And they got a great staff of people there. We'll tell you this, though, they will only be open through Wednesday of this week. No, we will oh, be Thursday, through Thursday. Thursday. We'll be open Thursday. We will be there Monday through Wednesday. Okay. The so store will be, be open through Thursday, but okay. the whole store will be closed on Friday and Saturday because of the 4th of July. 4th of July, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next week. Next week uh, is going to be talking about something that a lot of people suffer from. And it's a continuation of this show. Right, Basically so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be continued. Uh, fibromyalgia right. and chronic fatigue. Right. Two biggies. Two yes. biggies, and they've both been linked to some of the viruses, but there's mm -hmm. also other things that actually can make it too. So we're going to be talking more about the chronic fatigue and the fibromyalgia. And fibromyalgia, they can they pretty much hit you at... Uh, and any can hit you at any, at any time. Any time, yep. right? So Anytime. you know, it's not just delegated towards the older generation. Oh no, or probably a lot of young people have that. I know, a lot yep. of young people. A lot of young, especially women. So yes, mm -hmm. yes, it's I've, more I've known women. more women that, uh, yep. that that had the problem with it. Anyway, thank you for being with us this morning here on our live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy with uh, Dr. Jim and Janine Fox of Doctors Nutrition. Again, they're on Cowan Road in Gulfport, located just south of Pash Road. Stop by and uh, if you have some questions for them, glad to try and answer them for you.